Hi there. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on using the Smart Notebook and Smart Board systems. So Smart Notebook here I have is the actual program, the thing that you install on your computer. And the Smart Board is the hardware. There's a Smart Board. It's a touch sensitive screen. So you project a computer image onto it and then either the teacher or the student can go up and touch it, interact with it, write on it, draw things, click buttons, interacting with the computer. So this is nice. Not all classrooms have a smart board though. Each one costs several thousand dollars depending on the model. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can get a lot of nice features out of the smart notebook program without having to actually have this piece of hardware. This smart notebook program here. So let's start by installing this program. Uh, you download it at this link here which I'll put in the video description. It's the smart notebook collaborative learning software and there are versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now I'm aware that there is a mobile version for tablets, but I don't think it's I at its fullest in development yet, so you pretty much need to have it on a computer for now. Anyway, once you download this installer, it'll install the program for you. When it's finished installing, it'll ask you to enter a product key. So Smart Notebook is not a free software. However, a lot of faculties of education and schools and school boards have purchased product keys for their teachers to use. So I know that in OISE, in the Mastery of Teaching program, um, we are all given access to this product key. It's posted on Pepper. So do check with your um, school or with your employer to find out if these keys are available. Once you enter the key, you'll have access to the full features of the program for as long as you want. So let's open up the program and take a look. We open up Smart Notebook, and what Smart Notebook essentially is, is it's like Microsoft PowerPoint, except it's made with education in mind, so it's made to be more intuitive as well as more interactive. But the basic structure will be familiar to you if you've ever used PowerPoint. You've got these slides that you'll create, and you go through them in order when you do your lesson. Basic features are pretty intuitive. Let's first use the text tool to make a title for our lesson. So I'm going to make this lesson about the War of 1812, right? And pick select so we can pick this up and put it in the center. You've got shapes at your disposal. So let's put a rectangle banner and make it red. And so, so far very intuitive. You can write your points here lesson outline and let's say we want to put some pictures to kinda make this a bit more lively pictures uh, clip art is actually available pre-downloaded in smart notebook so go over the tabs and pick the second tab the one with the uh, landscape picture and we're gonna search for something that can serve as clip art. So I'm going to search for war. And it's turned up 81 pictures to do with war. So I'm going to pick one that is appropriate. Probably this one is appropriate. And put it over there. I go back to the first tab here. I can go back to my slides outline. Now, one unique thing about Smart Notebook is that it has tools that will allow you to interact with what you created on the spot in your classroom. So I made this ahead of time, but in my classroom, I'll be able to interact with the presentation in some ways. So a really simple way is the pen. You can draw on it, point out important parts of pictures or important parts of text. Highlighting, very similar. And all of these are customizable. You can change the colors and the thicknesses of what you're drawing or writing. You can make shapes. To draw attention to things. And anytime you do something, there is undo and redo available. So pretty intuitive. Press undo to undo the things that you've just put down. A really nice way to use the interactive part of Smart Notebook is to have a question and then have your students answer it in class. So let's say you have put up this question. 
when did the War of 1812 begin? But we want to cover up the answer. We want to have the students answer it first and then reveal the correct answer. So we can do that by making a shape. Let's take a rectangle and cover up the answer part. But now hold on, the inside is not really covered. So what we need to do is go to select, select this rectangle and go fix that by changing the color. We're going to want the fill color to be something solid like blue. Okay, so now the fill is blue and we can program this to animate. We want it to disappear later on in the lesson. So we'll go to properties, go to object animation, and right now it's set to none. Let's have it fade out. And under occurs we're going to say when the object is clicked. So this means that it's going to be a blue rectangle covering up the answer until we go and click it. So first we would ask the class and then some students would answer and then to reveal the right answer click on the box and there we go. So it's quite simple to make these pages on your own but the Smart Notebook also includes uh, quite a heavy selection of pre-made templates. So to access that we'll go to the second tab again and go to lesson activity examples. There are an incredible amount of pre-made notebook pages. So uh, this one here that I've highlighted is called click to reveal. So I'm going to drag it onto my page to show it. And this is a times tables learning exercise and it's tap to reveal again. So you answer two times two a student answers and then you tap it to reveal what the correct answer is. This is pre-made and it's nice if you have a need for a specific lesson or specific review exercise. If you ever have something where there's a lot of stuff on the same page, you might find it useful to use the Magic Pen tool. Magic Pen will detect the shapes that you draw. So if you draw a circle or an oval, it blacks out everything else and shows only what you selected. So you can use this to draw a student's attention to specific parts of the page if you don't want them to get distracted. And then when you're done, click the X. Magic Pen also recognizes squares. So if you draw a square or a rectangle, it'll recognize it and it'll zoom in on what you've highlighted. This is nice if you have any students that have a hard time reading the text at the size that it's shown on the page. You can drag this magnification box as much as you want and when you're finished get rid of it. Now I want to take a minute to talk about how using this software with a smart board in the classroom differs from just using it with a regular computer and a projector. So if you have the smart board in your classroom like this uh, it's very open to having students come up to the board and uh, interact with it. Students can pick up a pen and write with it, pick up or, or just use their finger and click on buttons or click on parts of the screen. So it's very easy in that way. But if you don't have a smart board, you can still get a lot of the same benefits. It's not as easy to have students interact with it because you can't touch the screen, but you can still do all these things like you can do click to reveal, answers, uh, you can annotate with your highlighter or your pen like I've done here and so I've used it in classrooms that didn't have a smart board and I still feel like I benefited greatly from having it compared to having just PowerPoints so if you right now you're thinking of using other PowerPoint or maybe overhead slides I would consider this because it brings some interactivity with to your lesson without really needing to have the smart board in my experience, it really does add something on top of the experience of just using PowerPoint slides. Because when you have slides, you're just like click, 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 going through them, and there's not much interactivity. Now, I've shown you some of the features of the program, but certainly not all of them. If you open the program for the first time, it's going to show you this tutorial. So it'll lead you through some of the features a lot of them I haven't talked about but I would highly encourage you if you haven't used it before to go through the tutorial first it'll kinda show you 
how to navigate it easily. It's pretty intuitive, but it still helps. And another thing that I wanted to show you before I finish this video is Smart Exchange. And that's because specifically some people asked me about this Jeopardy game that they saw teachers using. So what Smart Exchange is, is a site where people will create their smart notebook lessons and then upload them online for other teachers to download and use. You do have to sign up for it, but it's free. I've signed up and I'm signed in here. And because I'm signed in, I'm going to be able to download any resources I want to. Jeopardy is really popular because uh, there's a teacher that made a pretty much ready-to-go Jeopardy game. All you have to do is insert the questions. It's called Smartboard Jeopardy. So let's download it. Save it. and open it. If you have a test coming up with your students and you want to review with them in class, this Smartboard Jeopardy is a great and fun way to do that. I used it in the past and it's just really easy to get started. So to get started all you have to do is go through and pretty much make your categories and make up your questions. So you have five categories and you need to go through and enter all the questions. You enter the questions up here and underneath this box you'll enter the answer down here. But then make sure to cover up the box again because when the students actually play, here's how it'll go. They'll pick say a category one for 100, click on it, and they'll see the question and then they'll come up with the answer and to see whether they got it correct they'll just reveal under here and then go back to the Jeopardy board let's say team 1 got that correct so they need to get 100 points you drag these numbers to give them the correct number of points and then you take this blank box and you cover up 100 to show that the question is no longer available so it's very well programmed like that these pages are all linked together so if I click on 200 it will take me to that question and if you click Jeopardy board, you'll go back to there. So Smart Notebook Jeopardy is one of my favorite um, review lessons that I found on Smart Exchange. Uh, another really good one is called Olympic Review, and you can find that by searching on the Smart Exchange website too. It's pretty much the same thing, except instead of being Jeopardy themed, it's uh, Olympics themed, and themed in sports events. This is one case where I think you really don't need the smart board hardware to do this. This is just as effective using a normal computer and a projector, and I've done it in this way. It's very effective because the students don't necessarily need to be clicking these. You can be at the computer clicking them, and it's just as fun and just as interesting for them to review by playing a game of Jeopardy. So that's it for my tutorial on smart board and smart notebook. I hope that you as a faculty of education student or teacher consider using these in your practicum or in your practice. If you have any questions or trouble downloading or installing the software, let me know and I'd be happy to try and help. Thanks for watching this tutorial and have a great day.